Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the third Sunday of Advent. Welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Bobby, and I am a youth ministry intern here at the River. One of my favorite ways to celebrate this season is by wearing a different Christmas sweater for each of the Sundays leading up to Christmas. I have sweaters with ginger snap cookies on them that have broken legs, and even this one sweater that's meant for two, let's just say I'm keeping that one packed away this year. What are some of your favorite ways to celebrate this season? If you're able, you could write them below in the comments and share with the community. I'm excited to tell you about our Christmas Eve service this year. We really want to see you and be together, and so we'll be doing this on Zoom. Service will be at 4 p.m. on 1224. So be sure to mark your calendars. One of our river traditions is to light the Christ candle and for everyone to be holding a small white candle. This is to signify that Jesus is the light of the world, and we carry that light with us. If you plan to be at our Christmas Eve Zoom service, we want to make sure that you receive a candle. If you're in a River Small Group, your leader will be delivering that candle to you. If you are not in a River Small Group, we have designated pickup times at our ministry center. And if you cannot pick up your candle, there will be ways that we can make other arrangements to get one to you, whether it's delivery or by mail. Visit the link below for details on how you could find out how to get your candle. Today, I'm really excited to tell you that Lindsay is going to be teaching us how to sing, even in the darkness, 
with Mary as our model. We will also learn more about Advent giving. One of our river families will be, te- will be leading us in the lighting of the candle on this third Sunday of Advent. But before that, let us pray. Dear God, I want to thank you that in the craziness of this season, that we have all made it this far. I want to pray especially for those in our community who are feeling lonely. And God, would you just be with them? Make your presence known. Amen. The Lord of both light and the darkness, we are your people walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come Lord Jesus. For our world is trapped in endless cycles of violence and suffering. Come now as hope. Where our relationships are torn by conflict and bitterness. Come now as peace. Where our hearts are weighed down by grief and worry. Come now as joy. And where we have given up on the power of God to change anything in our lives or the world. Come now as faith. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named <clears throat> Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus! O oh God rejoicing, we remember the promise of your Son, as the light from his from this candle may the blessing of Jesus come upon us, brightening our way and guiding us by his truth. May Jesus our King bring light into the into the darkness of our world, and to us as we wait for his coming. Amen. Adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the are worthy for you alone are worthy for you alone are worthy Christ the Oh, come, let us adore. 
adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Good morning, my name is Margaret Ma, and I'm a volunteer member of the Rivers Giving Team. The Giving Team helps to direct the church's giving fund. From your donations to the river, a portion is invested in the giving fund to be given to ministries locally and around the world. Once a year, the Giving Team also leads the Advent Giving Campaign, which is an opportunity for us as a church to give an extra gift to a few of our ministry partners. Every year, my husband and I consider it a privilege to be part of the Advent Giving Campaign. We consider every good gift, including the gift of work and of earning a paycheck, to be a wonderful blessing from God, and we consider it our duty to give back to Him and to His kingdom work. It also fills our hearts with joy, and it gives purpose to our work to know that it reaches beyond us to those in need. For 2020, we are highlighting three organizations that have been directly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic this year. Last week, you heard about Shalom Iglesia, our beloved sister church. Next week, you'll hear about a student ministries group in Ethiopia called Ivasu. This morning, I'm delighted to introduce you to a ministry here locally in San Jose, serving the people of Santa Clara County called Reaching Out Center. Our very own Ihoma is here to tell us more about it. My journey with Reaching Out Center began in late April or early May, and I really love them particularly. I think they embody Maseo Day, the mission of God, what God's kingdom looks like lived out among us. Sort of particularly like that Matthew 25 passage. They're actually feeding the hungry. Reaching Out Center is a food pantry. They are located on the Cathedral of Faith campus on Kirtner, Canoas, and they're a place that every Wednesday and Thursday mornings, families in our community in San Jose can come and receive food, drive through, walk up, contactless delivery. They really are serving a crucial need in our community. I volunteer there every Thursday and I often do registration and that offers me the opportunity to talk to a lot of families, to hear a lot of wonderful stories, but also really hard stories that many are choosing between providing food for their family or paying their rent or providing food or childcare so that they're able to work. Those sort of hard, hard, hard decisions. And I'm so grateful that Reaching Out Center serves in that middle space. They're sort of the bridge providing opportunities and access that otherwise wouldn't exist. I would have to say, Reaching Out Center does quite a bit with a very lean, lean staff. I am sometimes really amazed at how efficiently and well they work and really excited that we are partnering with them this Advent to increase their capacity, to be able to expand the ministries that they do into more corners and spaces of the city. In particular, I see this in the other sort of lens. I help to distribute food to families at the river and Shalom and other communities. And we receive food from Reaching Out Center. Often one of their staff will drive a truck of food and deliver it to our location and we'll deliver it from there. But even just those minute connections, a staff to drive a truck money for the trucks, gas, all of that is very impacted by the amount of money they receive. At various points in times, the demand increases. So every time our government um, changes, whether it's like unemployment or um, COVID relief, all of those sort of things, the demand surges and I see them struggle really to meet it. I'm excited this Advent, we get to partner with them in more ways than just volunteering. We get to partner in allowing the mission of God to go forth in San Jose 
allowing them to hire whatever additional staffing they need, um, provide extra trucks, extra resources, so that this Christmas, this Advent, families would know the love of God in San Jose. Thank you for partnering with me. We hope you will consider a financial gift to support the ministry of the Reaching Out Center. Please visit the link on the screen for instruction on how to give online through the mail or through a stock donation. We hope you will give on top of your regular tithe. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Lindsay Smallwood. I'm so pleased that you're joining us here at the river for our third Sunday in Advent. And I spoke back in October, I think I shared that I started a new job this year. I'm working full time as a middle school English and history teacher. And a couple of weeks ago, one of my middle school students asked me a great question, as they often do. Uh, he said, Mrs. Smallwood, if the pandemic ended today, uh, no more masks, no more social distancing, no more lockdowns, what would you do? What's the first thing you would do? So I thought about it. And uh, the first thing that popped into my mind is that I cannot wait to go back to parties. I am an extrovert. I love being in a crowded room full of people. I love hosting. I love feeding people. I can't wait to hug. I want to tell stories and hear stories and laugh with other people in the same place and not just in little tiny boxes on Zoom. Uh, so yeah, just thinking about it made me uh, burst into a huge smile. And um, in our scripture story today, our hero also gets to wonder about a longed for time when a troubling reality will give way to a hopeful future. In fact, in our story, our hero finds out that that future is coming a lot sooner than they thought. Luke chapter one is one of my favorite passages of scripture. And I love it in part because women are the protagonists, which is not often true in um, many scripture stories. And I love it because it's weird and wonderful the way a lot of Bible stories are with an angel visitation and some surprising news. And I also love it because um, it's so universal. I see all of our stories in Mary's story, and that's whose story I want to share with you today. So why don't you join me? We're going to read together in Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is now in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. When the angel shows up, Mary is troubled. And I mean, that's to be expected. It's not something anyone 
expects to happen, right? When you wake up in the morning and certainly not Mary. I mean, she's not a priest. She's not a prophet. She doesn't usually have any kind of holy encounters. In fact, scripture tells us what little it does tell us about Mary is that she's overall a very ordinary and average person. She's a a poor girl from a poor town. And now we know that she's a virgin who's going to bear a son. And not just a son, but the son. The girl who's not expecting an angel in Luke is troubled. And She's not only troubled, Luke tells us she has questions about this plan. But isn't this how most of us are when we encounter God? I mean, even when we encounter God in the most mundane and and ordinary ways, I often encounter God in scripture reading. Uh, Just today at our family Advent devotional time, we were reading about the Ten Commandments. And as we read through the passage and then read sort of the devotional thought, we were reminded that uh, we have to be careful for even commandments like do not murder can come close to home because really when we begin to hold hate or despise other people in our heart, that is akin to murder. And as I was reading that to my children, I felt the gentle whisper of the Holy Spirit remind me about a difficult situation with a coworker and some of my own reactions to that situation. But even as I began to sense that nudge of the Holy Spirit, I realized that extending myself to that person in love, it won't be easy. I'm troubled. And I have questions about that plan. I often also meet God in the quiet of my heart. And I found that in the last season, a lot of times when I allow my heart to get quiet, what begins to bubble up to the surface is a swirl of all kinds of anxiety about friends who are sick and worries about my own health, about uh wondering whether I'm doing a good job as a parent and is democracy falling apart. And as I began to think about all of those things, I often hear again a sweet invitation from God to trust, right, instead of worry. But the truth is, for me, worry is a well-trod road that is pretty easy for me to navigate And the idea of trusting God sometimes feels like falling into a hole and I don't know where I'll land. I'm troubled by that plan and I have questions. But here's the thing that I love about Mary. Okay, She listens to God's messenger. She hears everything he has to say and then she accepts. She surrenders. There are so many reasons why God's plan for her life is crazy. I mean, to be unmarried and pregnant is embarrassing. And in her case, not just embarrassing, but impossible and and weird. And even though she starts out troubled, and even though she has questions in the midst of that embarrassing, weird, crazy plan, Mary decides to trust. I am your servant. May it be with me. How I wish that we could all be more like Mary, willing and responsive to the movement of God in our lives. After Mary has this visit from the angel, she decides to go and visit her cousin Elizabeth. And um, now that they're both pregnant, you know, they have this really exuberant reunion and they kind of share a little bit. And then after uh, they have greeted each other and said hello, uh, Mary begins literally to burst into song. She is so full of the Holy Spirit and so excited about what God is doing that she begins to sing to um, her cousin about the good things that God has done. Let's listen to that song now. As we look back at Luke 1, we're in verse 46. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. 
for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. This song, okay, this this song is something else. As Mary begins to sing out of the overflow of joy in her heart, she is singing the the dreams of her ancestors. These these words um, from this song are almost all directly pulled from Old Testament scriptures, probably psalms and and scriptures that Mary learned as a girl, either with her family or at the temple. She's singing of of what her people had been singing for generations, that the God who promised Abraham that his descendants would be more numerous than the stars in the sky and that the whole world would be blessed through them, that that God has not forgotten his children. And she's singing about the future, about the kingdom that's to come when justice will reign on the earth. And the hungry will finally be satisfied and corrupt rulers will finally lose their power. She's singing about a future where the world will know her name because of what God is about to do. Mary locates herself in the story of the people of God. And I think in 2020, in a pandemic, in economic insecurity and political unrest, we too need to find ourselves in God's story. Mary doesn't just accept the lot that she's dealt in life, she celebrates it. Our family has some happy news we are celebrating this Christmas. We are expecting another child, a boy, who's due in May. And I did not get an angel visit to announce this good news, but I have had the opportunity to go and see him on uh, the ultrasound a few times. And everything looks great so far. But even as we celebrate this good news, we are um, celebrating in sort of a tender place of hope. Even though we have three beautiful sons, uh, I have also lost four pregnancies to miscarriage. And four different times, there has been a little life growing inside of me that died before we could hold it or sing to it or give it a name. And so, yes, I am so happy about the possibility of welcoming this new little life into the world and into our family. But I'm also hoping in the darkness because I know that I don't really know what's to come. The truth is, and I think maybe we don't acknowledge this often enough, is that None of us really know what's about to come. We don't know if we're going to lose our job, have an accident, if someone that we love might die or be lost to us. Those things, they just aren't ours to know. And I think that the pandemic has stripped away some of the other things that used to feel really knowable, like when can I go visit a loved one? Or even where can I get a haircut? We don't know. We just don't know right now about a lot of things. And the truth is, Mary didn't either. But she sang in the in the darkness of pregnancy before the promise was fulfilled. Mary sang a song of hope, 
a song of praise, a song that looked back and a song that looked forward. And we are invited to sing too. We can sing about the things that God has done and all that we have seen with our own eyes in our own lives. And we can sing about the coming kingdom, the kingdom of love that existed before time began, the kingdom that birthed everything that we see and know out into the world. We can sing about the love that came in the person of Jesus, the love that rose up and conquered death, the love that will come again and be our home forever. You know, many of the common songs that we sing at Christmas time are actually really prophetic songs about the day when love will finally rule the world, when the kingdom that Jesus announced during his life on earth will finally come in full. Like when we sing, he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. We know, right? We know that the world is not yet ruled with truth and grace, but we are singing about the day when it will be so. One of my all-time favorite Christmas songs is O Holy Night, uh, both the Mariah Carey version and the Celine Dion version. But I love it when we can get to the third verse and remember that chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. That day has not come yet. Oppression is here and it's all around us. And everywhere we look, we can see our brothers and our sisters and sometimes ourselves experiencing the oppression that comes in this broken world. But I sing like Mary sang. I sing about a Jesus who came into the world at Christmas time and will one day come again and end oppression and injustice forever. We sing into the darkness because we cannot yet see. We sing into the darkness of a difficult season. But I want to tell you today that in our darkness, Christ has come. Though we are troubled and have questions, Christ is coming to us even now. And we have this promise that Christ will come again. I opened my message with a story about the question that my student asked me about what would I do if the pandemic was magically over today. And as I've thought about that question since he asked it to me, I think that really this is the question. It's the question that people have been asking since almost the beginning of time. And that question is this, dare we believe that a better world than this one is possible? Sam in The Lord of the Rings, after seeing Gandalf alive again, asks, is everything sad going to come untrue? And the answer for Sam and for us is yes, that is our hope. A better world than this one is not only possible, it's on the way. The kingdom is coming. It's a kingdom of more than enough, of righteousness, peace, joy, and justice. Today, in the darkness of the world as it is now, we are met by God and we are called to sing the wonders of his love. The love that we know to be true in our hearts and the love that we long to see in the world. Mary invites us to hope and not a hunker down and keep my head down and just wait this thing out to the end kind of a hope, but an active, singing, joyful hope that lives inside God's promises and believes them to be really, truly true. We're going to close today by listening to her one more time. You're about to see a short video that has the words of Mary's song 
kind of displayed for you in a creative way. And I'd like you to meditate and sort of reflect on those. And after the video is over, you'll have the opportunity to sit and think about what would it look like to sing with hope today in the darkness? My soul sings out to the Lord. My heart exclaims the work of God, my deliverer. For God has seen the status of God's lowly servant. And rightly, from this time forward, all the generations will see that I was blessed. For the Great One has done magnificent things through me. and I call upon the mystery of God's name. God's mercy is for those who honor God from generation to generation. God has shown the hand of justice by scattering the proud, humbling their haughty thoughts. God has brought down the powerful from their high places and lifted up all the lowly. God has filled the hungry with God's plenty and sent away the wealthy with empty hands. God has helped God's servant, Israel, to remember God's rich mercy in accordance to the covenant made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his children. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and
Friends, thank you so much for joining us here today. Even though we are far apart in distance, it's so great to be able to connect to each other uh, in this way and know that you are loved by God and by your church family. As you go to all the places that God has called you this week, or in many cases as we stay right at home where God has called us this week, May you know the hope that can sing in the darkness, the kind of hope that Mary held in her heart, that overflowed into her song, and that serves for us 
as a testimony of the better world that's yet to come. God be with you.